Minibits is a mobile Bitcoin wallet that allows users to use something called Xiaomian eCash on Bitcoin, which gives you near perfect privacy and zero to negligible fees with some trade-offs. Today, we're going to take a look at how to set up and use Minibits. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Bitcoin. If you need help with wallets, hardware, multisig, privacy, and anything else Bitcoin related, and the free tutorials on YouTube are not quite cutting it, you can head to my website, btcsessions.ca, and book me for one on one private sessions right there. Shout out to sponsors of the show, hodlhodl.com. If you're buying Bitcoin and you have some priorities in mind that include peer-to-peer -peer trading, instant self-custody, and no KYC, this is the place to be. You can sign up with just an email address. Once you're in, choose your currency, payment method, and amount, and start viewing offers immediately. You can also check out their peer-to-peer -peer lending platform with no rehypothecation. Check them out, hodlhodl.com. There's a link in the show notes down below. Now, when you do stack some sats in whatever fashion you choose, of course, you're going to want to secure it with some of the best hardware on the market. I love CoinKite and everything they're doing. The Cold Card Mark IV is my go-to wallet of choice. Of course, I've got their other goodies as well. Tap signers, sats cards, block clocks, open dimes, and I have pre-ordered the Cold Card Q. Uh, if you want to pre-order that or check out anything else that I've mentioned here, head over to coinkite.com. Use code BTC Sessions for a solid discount at checkout. Now, backups are important as well, and Cedor has one of the most beautifully designed and robust steel backup systems on the market. It uses a disc and capsule design and comes with a full starter set with mallet and everything to punch in your seed phrase and secure it from the elements, things like fire, water, corrosion, all of that. If you want to check them out, there are links down below and different links depending on where you are so that you get the cheapest shipping available to you. Nunchuck.io has you covered for your assisted multi-sig needs. Their Honey Badger option uh, allows you to set up a multi-sig wallet on your mobile device using things like the tap signer or cold card and plenty of the other hardware options. It holds your hand through the whole way. And once you're set up, you hold, you hold three keys. They hold one. It has baked in inheritance planning so that your sets get to your next of kin if anything should happen to you. And the best part, the whole thing is no KYC. So you don't need to give up your private information to set it up and have it work for you. Check them out at nunchuck.io. And finally, shout out to Start9, your sovereign computing solution. These guys sell plug and play devices so that you can host your Bitcoin and personal data stack on your own. Uh, so this includes things like running Bitcoin Core, your own Lightning node, mempool.space, join market, also files, passwords, photos, Noster relays and clients, some AI tools, tons of great stuff on these things. They have everything from entry level all the way up to what I'm running, which is the Start9 Server Pure. If you want to check them out, head to start9.com. And if you're looking at that Server Pure, you can use code BTC Sessions with a little plus sign at the end to get yourself 18% off. And with that, let's dive into the tutorial. So let's start with some prerequisites. What are you going to need to know in order to successfully navigate this tutorial? Well, um, I'm going to say off the bat, the number one thing that will help you through this is having a familiarity uh, with doing lightning transactions. So uh, whether it be a custodial option or a non-custodial option, doesn't matter as long as you have the ability to send a lightning transaction. If you don't know how to do that, I'll link some of my lightning tutorials down below so that you can get started there and then maybe start dabbling in what we're covering today. The other thing that is, we'll just call it a little bonus because some of the features in here integrate with it, is if you are using Noster, which is a decentralized social media protocol. Uh, if you're not using Noster as well, I will link some stuff down below. It is not 100% necessary to be able to use uh, mini bits, but it is a bonus. So um, I would check it out just to play around. Uh, either way, we're going to be utilizing this on Android. Uh, unfortunately, there is not a release for iOS at this time. However, 
I do believe there are options for iOS, either just used through your browser or in the App Store as well. Uh, there's um, a, a wallet called eNuts, uh, which uses the same technology that Minibits does. So if you want to check them out, I'll link that down below. I believe it's available on iOS. Uh, and then there's some other ones that you can use through your browser. So I'll link those uh, if you happen to not be on uh, Android and you'd like to try out this this new technology anyways. Um, so yeah, with that, we're going to be diving in to Minibits. Let's cover a little bit about what this actually is. So this is the website minibits.cash and they have a short explanation here. Minibits is an e-cash wallet with a focus on performance and usability. Cash is issued by mints and backed by Bitcoin via the Cashew protocol and Lightning Network. So what the hell does that mean? Effectively, what you're doing here is you are sending Lightning transactions uh, to this wallet, which then are stored in a custodial manner. Again, custodial manner, meaning that you have to be trusting uh, what is known as the mint that is holding those funds. So it would be a similar trade off to something like Wallet of Satoshi uh, or Albi or any other custodial Lightning wallet. Now, where something like Minibits and Cashew in general, the protocol, uh, is an improvement upon something like Wallet of Satoshi or Albi um, is that you get near perfect privacy once you are in that mint, meaning that your transaction amounts, your transactions to and from wherever you're sending is not only shielded from public view, but also shielded from the custodian itself, which is a departure from something like Wallet of Satoshi or Albi because they obviously have to maintain records of, okay, well, this account holds this much money and this account holds this much money. Oh, there's a transaction going here to here between users. They have a record of that. Uh, eCash allows for transactions to happen in a way in which that information is not privy to even the person running the system. So this is the trade-off here. The other benefit in the privacy realm is that you can send and receive Lightning transactions or eCash transactions. They're interoperable. Um, when you are sending and receiving Lightning transactions, of course, those are regular Lightning transactions into and out of the Mint, but you still get some privacy benefits there because there's no indication as to how many people are part of a Mint and you are actually benefiting from the privacy of everybody in that mint, as in you're kind of hiding in the crowd. If a lightning transaction goes into a mint, there's no indication as to who the recipient in that group of people is. And same thing if you send out, there's no indication as to who actually sent out of the mint. And the same would be true of you if you're sending from one mint to another, because you can have multiple different cashew mints of groups of people pooling funds to uh, obtain and gain privacy using the system. The other benefit of this is you're effectively getting either no fees if you're spending from within the same mint, every transaction is instant and free, or if you're sending from mint to mint or from mint to a lightning wallet, you're only getting the negligible lightning fees as opposed to any sort of on-chain Bitcoin fee. So your fees are basically anywhere from zero to very negligible small amounts on Lightning. Now, I will say before we dive into trying this out and setting it up, that this stuff is still very early days. So if you're playing with this, I would advise you to use very small amounts and use it as a learning tool, not as a primary method to store any sort of value and be cognizant of the custodial nature of this and the trust that you have to give the mint that you are operating with, okay? With that, I think we're ready to dive in. So we're gonna jump to my phone and we're gonna start trying out and setting up mini bits. Okay, so here we are on the Minibit screen when you first open up the app for the very first time, and it gives some little background on what Cashew protocol is, what eCash is, all that. Um, so I'm just going to, again, you can read through this if you, if you want to. I'm just going to 
uh, skip through here. And we're just going to, on the final screen, we're going to hit got it, take me to the wallet. Or if, and we'll look at how to do this later, but uh, if you want to recover a lost wallet, it's just like a regular Bitcoin wallet. You will have a seed phrase and you can hit that option there. But I'm going to hit got it, take me to the wallet. So this will just take a second and it's going to boot me into what will be my main screen. And so we can see a balance up top. There is a, uh, a, a little option in the top left, a little sandwich board for a menu. Down at the bottom, we see uh, receive and send as well as a little square to open my camera and scan. And then we see some tabs for wallet, contacts and settings. And then right in the middle of the screen, uh, we see add mini bits as your first mint to start. And so this is where you would add the mini bits mint so that you can collaboratively with people that are all part of this mint be able to receive and send transactions and send to and from the mint that you will be using. So I'm just going to hit that green button in the middle of the screen, add your first mint. And that should have me all set and ready to receive um, either eCash directly from somebody or to uh, or to be able to receive a lightning transaction and add funds to the mint. So this is basically set up. So let's just kind of get our bearings here. We kind of had a look at the main screen, but let's take a look in the top left, that sandwich board and see what's in there. That just takes to us to a history, any pending transactions, uh, filter transactions by tags, any transaction history stuff. If we go back out of this. If we go down to the bottom uh, and we click on contacts, again, it gives me options to add private contacts. It, you can see it auto fills a name for me and uh, uh, like a, a contact that somebody can add me as a contact here. So right now it's gapingbunk524 at minibits.cash. I will change that later. You see the option to switch that here. Uh, and then if I go over to public, again, this is where you can add your Nostra contacts. We'll get into that momentarily and we'll take a look at what that looks like. And then finally, let's go down to the bottom right settings tab and see what's in there. And this is where you can do things like manage your mints, backup and recover, uh, add security settings, privacy, uh, do any updates, all that kind of stuff, and uh, add Nostra relays. And in developer options, it gives you options to wipe the, the wallet or whatever you see fit. So more or less, we're all set here. We've got everything going. The one thing that you'll probably want to do is you're going to want to do a backup. So if I tip, tip uh, set on, on the backup screen here, um, you can have something that does a local backup just on, on your uh, phone itself. And so then if you go and you recover, then it will find that local backup and restore. But another great thing to do is to choose the top option, which is off device backup, which gives you an actual seed phrase to recover your eCash balance in case of device loss. Now, it's important to note that eCash is a lot different than regular Bitcoin. Uh, regular Bitcoin, it is all on the Bitcoin blockchain. And so you basically have a seed phrase, which represents a, a private key that can unlock Bitcoin that is on the blockchain. With eCash, it is actually a file system, and I'm not going to get into the, the details of it, but effectively, if you delete information, you could be unwittingly deleting your actual balance. So it's done differently. I recommend doing both backups here uh, because that just kind of hedges your risk. If you go hit off device backup, you can see here is a regular looking seed phrase that I can then recover later. So you would write this down on a piece of paper, keep it somewhere safe. but we're obviously not going to be using a large balance here. So uh, that's pretty much that. So I'm going to jump back to the main screen. I will be utilizing my Nostra account in the next section. If you are not on Nostra, you do not need to do this. Uh, and you can skip ahead to where we actually start using the wallet. All right, so the way that I'm going to integrate my Nostra account here is I'm going to go down to the bottom where it says contacts. This takes you to your public and private contact info there. And again, that that um, uh, I guess that public information where people can add me as a contact up top. But I, I want to change that. I want to be associated with my Nostra profile. So the three little dots in the top right, I'm going to top uh, tap those. 
That's going to take me to my Minibits wallet address. And it says you can share your wallet address to receive encrypted eCash over Noster. At the same time, it serves as your Lightning address so that you can receive payments from any Lightning wallet. So I want to change this, and there is an option to change it. There's also a little share button, but I'm going to hit change. And uh, this says I can change my picture, I can change the wallet address, or I can use my own Noster profile. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to tap that option at the bottom. Um, and so I'm going to enter my Noster address. This is something that I already have associated with my Noster profile. If, you do, if this is all Greek to you, but you want to learn, check the tutorials in the show notes. But my uh, Noster uh, address is btcsessions at vlt.ge. I'm going to hit confirm. Great. So this gives me uh, my Noster public key and um, the relay is associated with me so that I can basically add my contacts. The next thing it's asking for is my Noster private key. Now I'm not going to share this on the screen, but more or less I need to paste in my Noster private key here down the bottom. I'm going to hit confirm. Um, it may ask another quick, hey, does this look okay? And then I confirm it and then everything should be all good. So we'll come back as soon as I put in the appropriate information. If you've used Nostra, then you'll be familiar with your uh, NSEC or your private key. So we'll be right back. Okay, so it did give me a final option to say, once I had put in my uh, private key, it said, do you want to confirm this? Do you want to apply this or no? I uh, opted to apply it. And so now we can see that the little, uh, the little image in the top left is my Nostra profile picture. Uh, my my mini bits address is now the same as my Nostra address, BTC sessions at vlt.ge. And finally, if in the public section here, I tap on tip the people you follow, I can tap there. I can actually paste in my NPUB, my public key. And again, that would just be from your Nostra profile. I'll just go to it here. Um, that is typically somewhere in the top here. You can see NPUB. There's a little copy button, which I just tapped. Uh, but I can just paste that in and then hit save. And that should load up my contacts list. So there we go. I can start to see contacts popping in here. And I should be able to send tips to uh, any of these individuals and, um, and send them either eCash or, you know, uh, basically transact or request eCash, all of that different stuff. Um, I can also, again, in the private tab, add private contacts. So if you know a Minibits user and you know their, um, their Minibits address, you can go ahead and do that here. So nonetheless, I am all set up. Everything is ready to go. And we can now dive into funding the wallet and sending and receiving eCash. Okay, so let's get this wallet funded with a regular Lightning transaction. So I'm just going to go to Minibits for a second. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to create a Lightning invoice to receive some funds. So I'm just going to hit on the main screen, Receive down in the bottom left. Uh, I'm now going to choose Share a Lightning invoice. So I'm going to tap that. And maybe I'll top this wallet up with a thousand sets. Again, this is very early days and uh, a lot of this stuff is still in beta. So I'm not going to put a lot of funds on this wallet right now. So I'm going to type in a thousand sets. I can put a memo if I want. I'm not going to right now. But uh, and then if you have more than one mint, which you can set up and add mints, we'll get into that later. You can choose which mint you're going to go into and it will have a little green check mark beside it. I'm just going to use the default one for mini bits. And I'm going to hit create invoice. This will now create a lightning invoice that is a QR code, uh, but I can also copy that invoice and then use it in a lightning wallet wherever I want. So, um, or I can hit share and share it wherever I need to. Uh, but I'm going to go out of mini bits now. I've copied that invoice. I'm going to go over to Blink Wallet here as an example, and I'm going to hit send. I'm going to paste in the invoice I just created. I'll hit next. It says which account do you want it to come out of? Looks good. Hit next. Thousand sats lets me know what the lightning fee is going to be, which is one sat. That sounds great to me. I'm going to hit confirm payment and it should go off. There we go. Straight out of the wallet. Okay. And let's jump back to mini bits. And there we go. Payment success. I hit close and the wallet is now funded. So we can see there's now a transaction history, which also in the top left, if I tap it, I can see transaction history there as well. And we now have a funded wallet in which we can send and receive 
eCache. So let's go ahead and let's send some eCache and look at the different ways that we can do it. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to send some eCache first. So I'm gonna, on the main screen here, I'm gonna hit send. That's gonna give me multiple options. I can send to a contact, I can share eCache, or I can scan or paste to send. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit share eCache. It says, how much would you like to send? I'm going to send, uh, let's say, I don't know, a hundred sats, okay? Um, I can write a memo again, I'm not going to, and I'm gonna hit send now. What this is going to do is it's going to create an eCache token, what's known as an eCache token. Anybody could scan this, or I could hit share, and I could share it on whatever social platform I want, and anybody with that information, whoever got it first, would be able to redeem that eCache token into their wallet. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit copy right now. I'm going to pretend I sent this information to somebody and I'm going to see how they would redeem it without having to scan, but rather to having to paste in this information. So I've got another wallet here called eNuts and I mentioned it. I'll, I'll link it down below. I've done a video on this one, but in eNuts, I'm going to hit receive. And then it says, what, how would you like to receive? I'm going to paste and redeem eCash. So it's going to copy what's in my clipboard. So it says, hey, uh, this is 100 sats. This is the mint that is being used. Um, it says that this is not a mint that you're currently using. It's another group, but would you like to be part of this mint and trust it? I'm gonna say yes. And so this will basically add a connection to that mint in my wallet. And I now have claimed 100 sats and we can see that my balance has gone up. Fantastic. And if I go back here, I can now see that I've sent it, it was completed, and my balance has been reduced by 100 sats. Notice that there was zero transaction fee in that sending of eCash. So it was redeemed, and I don't need to worry about um, any sort of transaction fee. I can just send the exact amount, and I will get there in full to the person because there was no Lightning transaction, on-chain transaction, anything involved. It was just within the Mint. Okay, so that's all well and good. Let's look at other ways to send. So if I hit Send down at the bottom right here, again, I can send to a contact if I want in my contact list. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to hit Send to Contact. This just takes me literally to my contact list, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go to my public contact list. And just to show what it looks like on part of the receiver in this situation, I'm actually gonna send to my own Noster contact um, because you can actually do that. Uh, so I'll just scroll down a little bit and I think I see, there's myself down at the bottom. So I'm gonna tap myself. And then how much would I like to send? Let's send. 50 sats. Okay. Um, let's put a memo this time. I'll say, I'll just say, Hey, okay. Done with that. It says I'm paying from this mint. I only have one mint in this wallet. That sounds good. I'm going to hit send now. So what this does is it sends that eCash token and it confirms, Hey, do you want to send this to, and of course it looks funny because it's sending to myself, but yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit send and it's going to send Normally it would send all this gibberish and it would just land in somebody's uh, inbox and it would just show that gibberish. But depending on the Nostr client you're using, um, the app that you're using for Nostr, it could show up in a, an easily redeemable way. So I'm gonna hit send and I'm gonna close that. Okay, so that is sent off, but notice it says pending here, 50, negative 50 sats pending. That's because the recipient actually has to redeem the token. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to open up uh, Amethyst, which is a Nostra client, and I'm going to go to my inbox here and click on the uh, transaction or the message, I guess, from myself. But this is what it looks like. And you can see I was testing this before, but I can see BTC Sessions sent you 50 sats from Minibits Wallet. And it even has a little redemption thing that says cashew token. I have two options here. Number one is I hit redeem 
and it will come to me as a Lightning transaction to my designated Lightning address in Noster, which is something that, that you can set up in Noster if you're unfamiliar, or I can just copy the actual token. So I'm gonna do the copying of the token just to show you. So I'm gonna hit copy. It copies that gibberish, and I'll jump back to mini bits. I'm gonna hit receive, and I'm gonna say scan or paste to receive. It will open up my camera here, but I'm gonna paste from clipboard the button at the bottom. And it says amount to receive, 50. It is receiving from the same mint that I'm in, obviously. Uh, and I'm gonna hit receive. And that should say, yeah, there we go. Success, you've received 50 sats from, uh, to your mini bits wallet. And we can see that my balance is now, it was reduced, but it's now uh, then brought back up. And so you can kind of tell this is different from Bitcoin in that when I sent that cashew token, it actually was technically removed from my balance. And when I redeemed it, it was put back in. So it, it, in a way, it did actually remove it. Um, whereas when you send to your own address in a Bitcoin wallet, no money actually really ever leaves your possession. Temp, you know, there's no potential for it to leave your possession. Um, and there's a transaction fee associated. In this instance, nothing. Uh, there was actually 50 sats that technically speaking could have exited my wallet at any time. Um, so let's, let's do the same thing one more time, but I'm going to hit redeem and we're going to see it go out as a lightning transaction. So I'm going to hit send. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to send to a contact. I'll just find myself again. So down at the bottom here, I'll tap myself. Uh, this time I'll do, um, I'll do 50 sats and, um, I'll just say, Hey, okay. I'm going to hit send now. It's going to confirm, hey, do you actually want to send to this person? I'll hit send and off it goes. Okay, so again, balance reduced by 50. I'll jump over to Nostra here. And uh, here is the new one. Um, and instead of hitting copy, I'm going to hit redeem. So when I hit redeem on the screen, it says, Oh, and I hit it twice. Anyways, it says it's, it was redeemed, but I hit it twice and it gave me an error. Hey, this has already been claimed. So you can see like when it's in the form of like a, 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 a token, then anybody can claim it. And if somebody claims it later, then it, it can't be redeemed twice. So nonetheless, I did hit redeem. And so where, where did that go? Well, if I actually go to my Nostra profile, um, I do have a lightning address and it goes to strike right now. So you can see the little lightning logo and then it says BTC sessions at strike.me. So that should have gone to my lightning wallet with strike. So let's go check that out. Go to strike, log in, and let's go to recent transactions up top. Let's see, I received 48 sats. You can see it says redeem cashew. So there was a two sat transaction fee for the lightning transaction, but it still went directly to my lightning wallet. So you can now start to see this interoperability between lightning and eCash and the ability to redeem via Noster and other mechanisms. So I've now sent and received in multiple different ways. Um, and again, just looking at the receive screen, again, we've got options to receive via lightning. We've got we could scan a cashew token, which I don't, I'm not using a secondary phone right now, but you get the point. If it was on somebody's phone, you scan it and it redeems. Or I could paste in the information. I can also send a payment request and that can go to, again, anybody in my, uh, in my list. So let's try sending, a, again, a payment request to myself. What do I want to request? Let's request... Uh, just so it's, it stands out, I'll request 14 sats. Um, and I'll say, please, sir. <laughs> All right, there we go. Create invoice. And I'm going to hit send request. Now, this is requesting a lightning transaction. So I'm going to hit send request. Off it goes. Let's check in. And it says, hey, uh, BTC Session sent you a lightning invoice for 14 sats from Minibit's wallet. Memo, please, sir. <laughs> so I will hit pay. And it's going to say, hey, what do you want to pay with? Um, we'll just use 
strike as an example, uh, and we'll send 16 sats. There is a two sat transaction fee, and off it goes. And let's check back in. And there we go. We can see that we've added 14 sats. It has been redeemed, and that has been added into the mint. Now I sent from a Lightning address, or sorry, from a Lightning wallet on Strike directly into a mini bits wallet. So it was a lightning uh, request. Um, again, I can, I can receive in many different ways uh, and lightning is just one of them. Anybody can send me eCash in my mini bits wallet um, to my address, however I see fit. And then I have options for sending. I can send to contacts. I can share eCash creating a, a token or I can scan or paste to send. And so pasting, what would that look like? I could paste a, uh, a lightning invoice there and I would send out a regular lightning transaction. So really quick, let's just try that. Um, maybe I'll use blink this time. I'll hit receive. I would like to set the amount to, uh, let's say, uh, 30 sats, set the amount. This creates my lightning invoice, which I can then copy. We'll jump back to mini bits. And let's say scan or paste to send. It'll open up my uh, it'll open up my camera, but I'll hit paste from clipboard. It says, "Hey, um, you're going to be paying to a Blink Wallet user, and you're paying from this mint. Is that okay?" I'll hit pay now. It will send off a Lightning transaction. Should just take a second. Payment completed. Okay, that's great. We can if we click on it, we can say 30 Sats went out. It was a one Sat network fee. Let's jump back to Blink, and I can see an incoming transaction right here for 30 sats, okay? And everything went off without a hitch. Okay, so I'm back in Enuts now. I've cleared out some of the funds, but I wanted to show really quick what it looks like when you receive funds not from the mint that you're in within Minibits. So I'm going to go here, I'm gonna hit send. I'm gonna send some eCash. And I'm going to send it uh, from the Enuts Mint. And we'll just do something like 15 sats. And that all looks good to me. I'm going to hit Create Token. And so this, again, brings up a scannable token. So I could scan that with mini bits camera. Uh, or I can just copy the token with my clipboard. So I'm going to do that. And I'm now going to jump over to mini bits here. I'm going to hit receive. I'm going to scan or paste to receive. I'll paste from the clipboard. This says, hey, the amount to receive uh, is 15 sats, and you're receiving from legend.lnbits.com, which is another mint, and it does tell me it's a new mint. If I want to receive it, I'm going to say receive, or I can cancel. So I'm going to hit receive, and in a moment, that should just add to my wallet. It says success. You receive 15 sats, and when I close out, what you'll notice is I've now got this little dot down below and it separates out the mints of where my funds are allocated. And this is going to be different depending on the wallet that you're using, but I can swipe over to the side and I can see, hey, in this mint, I've got 15 sats. In this one, I've got around 800 sats. So um, this is what it looks like when you're dealing with multiple mints. Um, and yeah, that will very much depend as we saw with, uh, with Enuts there. When I go back, okay, token has been spent. It just gives me a general balance and we don't see the mints directly on the main screen. We see them as we're going to send or if you go into the options and, and look into the details, you'll see the different mints that I'm a part of in that section. So again, depends on the app you're using. It may vary. All right. So the last thing I want to do is just go into settings in the bottom right. And let's just take a look at um, a couple of the things in here. So now that we've been playing around, if we go into Manage Mints, we can see the different mints that are available here. If I want to add a mint, I hit that and you can just paste in the URL for any mint that you'd like to be a part of, or you can just simply receive a transaction from somebody within that mint. And again, there's going to be a whole bunch of different mints. Some may be more trustworthy than others, but the keyword there is trust. And of course, this is custodial. And so you need to manage your risk as you see fit. Uh, going back out of that, 
Again, we've already looked at the backup and recovery thing, um, but all of that is there for you to do. And again, your off device backup is advisable. Obviously I showed mine at the beginning of the video here. I'll be clearing this wallet off anyways. Um, all right, if we go to security here, you can choose to encrypt your storage. You can use biometric, biometric authentication. Uh, if you go down to privacy, of course you can turn on the Tor network. You can disable logging if you want in terms of errors and all that. Um, if you go to update manager, it'll let you know if there's any updates to the app. And then in developer app options, the main thing I wanted to show you is down at the bottom, there's an option to factory reset the app and wipe it and start from scratch, which I'll be doing after I finish recording here. So that is more or less it. We've kind of done the ins and outs of Minibit's wallet. So just some final thoughts here in and around Minibits and Cashew in general. Um, I like the direction that projects like this are going. I love the idea of having different tools to have uh, different privacy and kind of having like community pots of funds that can help benefit people um, with said privacy. Of course, there are big trade-offs in terms of custodial risk here, and that's why we're dealing with small amounts and that is totally fine. Uh, but you need to gauge your own risk. And even the people that are building this often say, make sure you only use tiny amounts and only deal with mints that you're familiar with or, you know, accept the risk of dealing with an unfamiliar mint with very small amounts. Um, in my opinion, I think that uh, it would be beneficial if wallets like Wallet of Satoshi and Albi and Blink and basically all of those custodial wallets, you know, you're you're already making the try the trade off of custody. If you're utilizing them, um, you should at least be getting some excellent privacy out of doing so. Like there should be a reason that you make that trade off. Obviously, the reason in part is because opening lightning channels can be expensive at times and it may not be justified in the amounts that you're transacting. But at the very least, you should get some benefit out of it. And so I would love to see wallets like that adopt Cashew as kind of their default way of transacting within that pool. Can you imagine if every Wallet of Satoshi user had the privacy benefits of using an eCash Mint as opposed to just, um, you know, Wallet of Satoshi knowing every balance? I think that'd be fantastic. So um, I, I hope to see more of this in the custodial lightning space. This may not be for everybody. Uh, and so if it's not, then disavow this entire tutorial. But if you're curious, if you want to play around, feel free to. But again, uh, make sure you're cognizant of the trade-offs and that you hedge your risk accordingly by not putting too much into anything like this. Let me know what you think about mini bits and cashew in general in the comments down below. I'm curious to hear your takes. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do like, subscribe, share. All those things help a ton. Hit that little like button in the bottom of the screen. Share this on whatever socials you're on and subscribe and help me on my quest to 100,000 followers this year. Uh, if you want to help with the show in another way, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors down below. Those were Hoddle Hoddle, Coin Kite, Cedar, Nunchuck, and Start9. And finally, if you need some additional handholding uh, and the online tutorials are not enough for you and you need some one-on-one -on -one time, you can head over to my website, btcsessions.ca, and that's where you can book me for one-on-ones in terms of wallets, hardware, multi-sig, privacy, and plenty of other Bitcoin-related questions you may have. With that, I'm out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening, wherever you may be. See you guys next time for your daily session. Bitcoin.